SW Box. I'm Neil and today I've decided to remake a video I made quite a while ago. It's how to tear down an iPad 2. The previous vi video I made has got 17,000 to 18,000 views at the moment but I'm not happy with the content and I believe I can explain a lot more so I've decided to redo it. So we're going to move the camera in now and then you guys get a better camera angle and a closer look at how to do it properly. Okay, let's make a start. Basically all you're going to need is a small Phillips screwdriver, a scalpel or something of similar thickness because you need something very thin to get in here and a pry tool. Now, all, you, all I'm going to do to start with is uh, use the uh, scalpel. Now, I'm just going to turn it all off. So one that's turning off. I also need a heat gun. If you haven't got a heat gun, then you can try with a hair dryer, but it's going to take a lot of work. Now, the heat gun itself, I set to 120 degrees Celsius, so it's quite high. Basically, this is a safety one. Uh, as soon as I put it down, it will turn itself back off. Uh, you can get these from our website, but like I said, to be honest, if you haven't got one and you don't want to spend the money, then uh, try it with a hairdryer. It's only to soften up the glue, it, it will help, but it just takes a lot longer. Now, basically, when you begin, start on this bottom corner and just go in between the seal and the digitizer itself. Okay? Now let's heat it up first. Like I said, mine's come apart pr probably about three times a week, so it's really easy to take off. Might as well remove the case as well, get that out of the way. Really give it some nice heat around these because they are really well stuck down, especially with the Apple original adhesive kits. Mine's going to come off really easy, to be honest. When you do it, just take your time, go nice and slow, like this, and just cut. Try not to go too deep. I'm going about 7mm there. And you just slide it up. When it starts getting tight, apply more heat. Don't go above 120 degrees because you will crack the digitizer. If it, if it hasn't got a problem and you've got a problem with your LCD, then I'd advise not to go above 120 because they do start to crack. Just work all the way around. So you can see my knife just sliding straight through it where it's been apart so much. I need to put a new sticker kit in there. So I'm just going to take it out now. Come past the forward camera. Let's slide it down. Okie dokie. I'm going to go to this corner. I don't go down here. I'll show you why soon. Now do the bottom. The bottom, this is the critical place, okay? Um, about here is your Wi-Fi signal cable and most people cut through it. It's very easy to cut through this. I've done it probably two or three times just where I've been rushing to test things. Um, so don't feel bad if you do. And they're only like three or just under four dollars. So it's not a, a massive expense. Don't worry if you do cut through your Wi-Fi. We'll have a, a, a better look at that in a minute once I get it open. Just talk you through. Pick up, go back in. Like I said, try not to go too deep. This is a critical place. So I'll bring the knife out a little, stop there and come back in on the other side of the home button. Now this is another critical area. 
because down here is the cable for the digitizer itself. This is why I try and avoid it the most, because if, if you haven't damaged your digitizer and you're looking to change something else like LCD, then the last thing you want to do is cut through that cable. So, once you've heated, once you've cut round the first time, what I suggest is you light, you quickly heat it up again, and then you're going to start prying it open. But once you've broke the seal, the, the glue seal, it's normally e easy enough to cut open. So, let's put that away now. And all I'm going to do is just lift it up like so, put my pry tool in it, and just start turning it, and then basically unstick it this way. And then the corner that you haven't uh, unstuck, you can, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm just going to cut the glue all the way along, like so. There's the ribbon cable I was talking about, this is why you want to avoid this corner. If you're already breaking your digitizer, don't worry, just cut it off. Basically, if, it, if this is cracked, then don't worry, just cut through it, it doesn't matter, you're already changing it. This is the Wi Fi cable, which I'll talk about in depth in a minute. Uh, basically, to remove the LCD, it's really, really simple. You've got four screws, they're all Phillips. I've lost one, so I'll put a um, torque screw in it. Um, but on yours, you're, you're definitely going to have four Phillips screws in there. They're nice and big, so you don't have to worry. Make sure you put them all together in a safe place. Okay, so here we go. We just take the last two out, like so. I've got to use this tool, as I said, I lost one. There we go. And now I'm just going to lift this up. Try not to get fingerprints on it. If you do, remember to clean it afterwards. Okay, to remove this, if you need to change this, then I would avoid taking it off at the motherboard. Only because it's not good to keep taking things on and off a motherboard. Uh, but both clips are identical. Basically, you just lift up this latch with a pry tool, hopefully. There you go. Lift the latch and pull it off. Once you've done that, just take it clean off and remove it. Okay, you've got the battery here, you can change that if needed. Um, this is a Wi-Fi cable. It's really easy, remember when you're cutting through this, if you, it's difficult not to cut through it in my opinion. Um, it's only because I know exactly where it is. That I I managed to cut through it this time. If you when you change your digitizer or your LCD, just inspect this. Make sure it's not ripped or cut in any manner at all. Okay. If it is, change it. The way you change it, I've done a video, but you can take this uh, plate off, and then um, obviously you can get to it because it's plugged in underneath onto another little board. I've made a video, you can search it on YouTube. Now, to change the digitizer itself, it's really easy. You've got two little clips here. Lift that up. I'm gonna use my scalpel for the other one because this is in the way. And I'm just gonna pop that up like that. And unplug it. And there you have it. Digitizer comes clean off. Uh, put your new one in, like so. Which I'm gonna do now. Just make sure you get it lined up, push it in, make sure it is pushed in all the way and push the latches back down. Now that is back installed. Um, LCD, again, just need to plug it back on. Remember, you've got to plug in the digitizer first before you plug in the LCD. Handy little tip, or will you be taking it back off? There we go. One set down, push the latch back on, close it over. Just keep an eye on the digitizer cable, make sure you're not trapping it in any way. Okay, four screws back in. 
One thing I will say, if you change the digitizer, we do give you a free sticker kit, okay, which looks like this. Uh, these sticker kits are only 161, so if you're changing your LCD or Wi-Fi cable, it's worth buying one of these sets and just reapplying the, the, the adhesive, just so you know it's sealed properly. Uh, like I said, they're only 161, so it's not a great expense. And to keep dust and everything out of your iPad, it's well worth doing. So. There we go, pop that on. That's the tool plug. Down. Oh. It doesn't matter where you put the screws, they're not all different ends, they're all exactly the same. So, once you've got that off, take that there, and then just close it back up, basically. Obviously give you LCD a good cleaning and then that will finish it up. When you put it back on, just line it up. I will replace the adhesive on mine to be honest, but I'm not doing it now because it takes a little bit of time. Okay, and then once you've got it down and you're happy with it, turn it on and hopefully it will fire up. There we go, the apple's coming on. We'll wait make sure it comes on and everything works and we'll move the camera back out, so just wait a second. <sighs> apples do take a little bit of time. They, I think that iPad 1 is easier to open, but the iPad 2 is better to work on. There we go. So that's all working fine. Okay, let's move the camera back out. Okay, so to summarise, uh, obviously that is how you repair an iPad 2. You do need a pry tool, a really thin knife, um, and a Phillips screwdriver. Just take your time when you're doing this, and don't forget you do need a heat gun as well. Uh, if you haven't got a heat gun, a really powerful hair dryer, and just realise that you're going to take a lot longer. You know, so just take your time, don't panic, and everything should be Okay, thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.